Hey everybody, John Trobles from Policy Viz. This is my first Tableau video on this new playlist. This is the challenge for the Back to Viz Basics uh, project going on week two about unemployment rates in countries across the world. This is the final dashboard I created. I know it's not amazing. I know it's using default Tableau colors and there's a map which we don't all love, but I'm just getting into it. So bear with me. I'm gonna show you a few things that I've got going on in here and a few places that I think I'm a little frustrated and certainly some things that I'm, I'm still not sure about um, in Tableau. Okay, so let me just bring up to speed of what we've got. Uh, here's the raw data file. Uh, it's uh, countries around the world, uh, three different genders. So all male and female, so still binary gender uh, categories. We have uh, the month. Um, most of the countries in this data set start in January of 2000, but not all of them. Some start a little bit later. They all end in September of 2021. And then we have the actual unemployment rate. So that's what we've got going on here in the data set, okay? And so this is the final dashboard. I've got a map on top. I've got a line chart in the bottom left, and then I've got a bar chart in the bottom right. Now, um, let's start with the dashboard itself. I, I can pretty much handle myself in, in building a dashboard. I sort of know how to drag things around. I know how to change things from uh, tile to floating, uh, how to add a text window. A couple things that I'm not quite there on yet is the filters to apply to the entire uh, dashboard. I kind of got that with the map. Um, you see, like if I click here, um, it zooms in and gives me that you know particular line. So I've got that sort of map filter. Also, you'll notice I have um, in the little tooltip, I actually have the line chart of what what I'll show you will be is the change in the un, un, is the change in the unemployment rate. Um, I learned that I'm still in parallel. Part of my Tableau learning is taking Steve Wexler's uh, course on Tableau for survey data. I would say it's not quite like uh, great for like first time Tableau users. Um, it is, I would say, kind of between like intro and intermediate. I've learned a lot of great stuff on it uh, in the in the class, so I, I do recommend it. But it's 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 pretty specific to survey data, which you know, great. A lot of us using survey data uh, with uh, Likert scales um, and the like. Um, I saw this little trick. I don't know if trick is the right word. This little technique uh, in in Steve's video to add the graph right into the tooltip. So I thought that was a nice thing. So I, I incorporated that here. And the other thing I wanted to mention before I move on to building each of these is th I added this little like text tile here, right? And notice that it's got the white text. So like it comes in. So, okay. So here's the layout tab. I'm going to go to background. It comes in like this when you first add it, it comes in. And I didn't want to have it um, transparent like this because I don't have data for every country. So this part where it sort of hangs out over Russia, I can make uh, white. The problem that I had is like, this is kind of, you know, you sort of come into the view like this. Like my instinct is like, I would click format text object and in the window or the menu, I would have an option to change colors. And it's just like the alignment of the text. Like this is one of the things that I'm still, I, I would say is kind of a complaint about Tableau, but it's also just like I'm new to the tool. So like anything, you sort of get used to these things, but like there's a lot of different menus all over the place. There's drop down things up here. You know, there's menus within here, right? That you can click. And then there's like menus over here. And like, this is a huge long tile uh, area and like there's no spot to change the formatting. So like what turns out is that uh, you have to close this you go to the layout tab and with the selected, you change the background and here I'll change it to white. Wasn't quite intuitive for me to find that. So it took me a while to figure that out. Okay, so that's just one thing. So that's that's what we have. Um, so I've got a map, I've got a line chart and I've got a bar chart. Now, what I'm going to show here is the percentage point difference in the unemployment rate between each month for the line chart here, between each month and the first observation, which for most of the countries here is January of 2000. Not every country, but for most countries is January 2000. In the bar chart, what I wanted to show was just the difference between the last data point, which is September 2021, and the first available date. And I will say, if I had, uh, input from the fantastic editorial team at the Urban Institute, where I 
uh, work, uh, they'd be able to come up with something much better than what I've written here. First available date is kind of kind of terrible. Um, but uh, that's why it's not like since January of 2000, because not every country starts in the same thing. And then you're also going to see to make the calculation uh, to get this bar chart, I needed to use calculated fields and uh, levels of detail, LOD calculations, rather than using a table calculation, which um, I thought might work after doing a whole bunch of work making formulas. Uh, then I went to table calculations and then I had to go back to formulas. And I'm going to note here, and I'll say this a couple of times, uh, Kevin Flerlidge was super helpful in, uh, in helping me with this and other Tableau questions I have. I, I would say that, as I've said many times before, the Tableau community is, is quite amazing. I've put out a lot of tweets with questions and things and, and lots of comments getting back. And uh, I've sent uh, Kevin a couple of dashboards already and he's you know quick to, to, quick, to back to, quick to get back to me. Okay. So let me turn to a new Tableau instance um, where I have the data already loaded in. One other thing, and I know this is, I think this is probably just like standard software build techniques, but like when I look at all the uh, windows here, it'd be really nice to have something on these little icons that helps me differentiate between the two instances like if i have three or four of these i end up just kind of like cycling through until i find the one that i want it'd be really nice to have like a little icon that says even if it was just numbered one so they're differentiated in some way this is this is to me a little frustrating maybe maybe i'm not using tableau in the right way like maybe i'm not supposed to have multiple things open not i think i can but like it's to me a little frustrating to go back and forth so again to the third group that's watching, folks at Tableau, uh, if you're if you're watching, uh, that's 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 one thing. Okay, so let's take a look at what we got. So um, we're gonna make just a little chart here. Um, got a bar there. We're gonna add uh, the country name by detail, and then we're gonna look at the date. And so, okay, now here's something. I think anyone who's been using Tableau for more than a minute is probably gonna laugh, and I'm like, I'm still not quite sure about these three. Now, these, I would say these first, these two areas of the, um, the date. So you've got like parts. So this is like the month, right, of the date. So this is like May. So this is like summing up. I'm still trying to get this in my head. So I'm like teaching myself right now. This is like the sum within each month um, or within each year um, as opposed to the actual date, which is the value of the date, which is what I get here. So this is like each month. So this is what I want. Also, the sum is a little weird. Um, now, of course, I have three categories of gender. So I need to throw that into the filter here so I can look just at everybody. And you see, I get some differences. And now I probably want, well, sum and average shouldn't make a difference here, right? So again, I'm still struggling with like sum and averages having to like make that clear here, but I'm getting there. Okay. So now this graph is fine. You can see the dip in unemployment rates uh, during the financial crisis and then the big spike over here during uh, the pandemic. Um, but like if I add color to this, like, I mean, this is using a diverging palette, which doesn't really make much sense here. So let's uh, move it over to a blue palette, like sequential color palette, like that makes more sense, but it's not particularly very interesting. So what I wanted to do to go back here is to show the change, the percentage point change from each month from the first observation, because then I'm going to get some positives and some negatives. And I get, you know, a little bit more, um, you know, some interest, a little bit more of an interesting uh, visual. Okay. So I'm going to go back over here. So what I need to do to do that is to do that calculation. And my first thought was to make some formulas, which I had mostly right, except for one big thing that I didn't know that Kevin helped me with, and I still don't quite understand it. So I'm sure Kevin's going to e be emailing me after this video if he watches. Uh, thanks again, Kevin. Um, then I was like, oh, maybe I can do this as a table calculation. Again, I'm watching Steve Wexler's course simultaneously while I'm working on my own stuff, and he's doing table calculations in one part of the, of the class. And I'm like, oh, well, maybe it's in here. Turns out it kind of is. Um, you know, you can do relative to the first and I think you kind of get it close. So here we could change the color palette. 
And this might actually be uh, correct. Let me use that default color palette. Um, and I'm not sure like, so it's using the sum over here in the color. It's using the average over here. Does that matter? I don't really know. Let's change this to the average. No, that doesn't matter. Why is the diverging palette not centered at zero? Why? So I, I don't, so <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Like, I'm sure someone's watching this is like, this is an easy question, but like, I'm not exactly sure why this isn't starting at negative 12% and going up to 15% when that's the range of the data. But I'm not gonna worry about that because after playing around with it, I realized that even if I got the table calculation correct to make the bar chart, that's essentially just the last point, right? So the what, the, what I want that bar chart to be, like over here, this bar chart, what I want this bar chart to be is the difference from September 2021 to the first observation. And if I use a table calculation, I'm pretty sure I can't make this bar chart using a table calculation. I actually have to do it using formulas. So that's why I ended up with formulas. So um, maybe someone can answer this. I'm sure someone can answer this question about the table calculation, but I'm not, I'm not really going to worry about it because I end up not going that direction. Okay, so what do I need to do? Let's go back. Uh, let's open the data. Take a look. The way I need to do this is to create the unemployment rate in the first observation and the unemployment rate in the last observation. The difference between those would give me my bar chart and the difference between the first unemployment rate in the first observation and the unemployment rate will give me the lines for my line chart. So that's what I need to do. And I need to do some, some calculated fields to do that. So let's go to calculated fields. Now, I will say I am not like, um, I certainly have a lot of experience coding, definitely not like a professional coder. Uh, I sort of grew up in my coding experience with like more statistical packages. So SPSS, MATLAB, SAS, Stata. Like I can, I, I can't really code in SPSS, but those other three I can basically code in. And so the way I think about doing these formulas, these calculations is just kind of different than the way Tableau has them. Does it obviously doesn't make one of us right or wrong. It's just different. And I haven't quite got my head around it. So for example, we want to create, we want to get the, we need to make a calculation for the first date in each country, right? So it's the fixed minimum date by country. Now, the way I would do this in like Stata, let's say, is I had some variable name and I would say, you know, equals, uh, you know, minimum of date if country equals X. And then I would loop that, put that in a loop and just, you know, just loop through all the countries and find that minimum date. That's not how uh, Tableau calculated fields work. So I'm still sort of like trying to get that in my head. So the way this works, I mean, so the, the easy way, right, is like, okay, so let's find, and I do like the way it, it pre-fills in. So let's find the minimum date. Of course, this is going to give me the minimum date for all countries. So this is going to be January 2000. So even if there's a country that starts in May of 2005, this is the minimum for all countries. So that's not going to work. So we need to use what our Tableau calls uh, levels, level, levels of detail uh, formulas. So here, and this I actually feel like I'm starting to actually get. Like this one I'm starting to understand. So... This is a level of detail calculated field. And so what this says is fix whatever this variable is. So hold that constant. And then for that group, calculate whatever you put after the colon. So in this case, fix the country name and calculate the minimum date for each country. So this to me, I, I finally sort of got this in my, in my head. So I'm, this works. I'm going to click OK. I've got that one. I also need to create the maximum. So I can do that actually. Uh, I've got that here. So I'm just going to change a few things here. Max. Let's delete the copy and change this to max. All right. Good. Done. OK. All right. So let's see if that's right. OK. Here's my like biggest complaint about Tableau so far. I can't see the results in my tab, in my data view. Like I, that part I don't understand. And like, and, and sometimes I can, like if I create, we'll see if I count, like if I create some calculated fields, sometimes I can see them, 
but usually I can't. And that to me is, is really frustrating. And what some people have suggested is you do your calculations in the data source tab at the bottom, right? When you, when you get in, but like, I need to explore the data, understand the data first, maybe make a couple of, you know, quick visualizations to see, you know, the line chart or the bar chart or map or whatever it is. So am I supposed to toggle back and forth? Like that to me is, is not how I work. Again, not right or wrong. It's just not like how I like to work. I like to see my data. And so this is a little frustrating and we'll come back to it because we're going to make it the way that, again, Kevin, thanks. The way Kevin suggests is like, just make a table. And if you make a table, then you can just see your data. But of course, making the table wasn't like totally instinctual either. and wasn't easy to do. So we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. So I know this works. I mean, I think it works, but like, I kind of know it works. I actually wanted to number this differently. So I'm, I'm numbering these. This is actually a technique I've seen a few places people do is like just number them. And then they sort of line up nicely. I kind of, I, I like that because in, you know, in state or SAS or something, you couldn't start your variable name with a number and you couldn't have a dot in it. So that's, that's kind of nice. Okay. So new calculated field. So we want the fixed min date rate. So we want the unemployment rate at the first date. Okay. So here we'll write it out. So if the date equals um, the fixed minimum date, I guess I have to delete this here. If that's the minimum, then give me the unemployment rate. Else, uh, give me a null and then end. And also, like, I feel like these should just auto capitalize. Like, the default is in, except, in Tableau is clearly to make these capital. So I feel like this should, like, automatically, but it clearly doesn't. So I'll just change that, I guess, to make it look, look nice. And then again, I need to do this within each country. So I need to do a level of, of detail. Uh, formula here. So I'm going to do fixed country name, add that colon, and then I need the minimum. I need to wrap this whole thing in a minimum and then close that up. Right. And so this is what I, um, I need to close. This needs to be, so I need to, uh, close that all up. Okay. So I've got that. I'm going to name this three and I'm going to duplicate that. And I'll edit and I'm going to change this and this and this and this. Okay. And I think that's right. Okay. So now let's look at the data. Oh, look at that. We can't look at the data. I mean, I'm not saying that if I could see the data for, you know, in this case, like just Australia, right? Like I'm still scrolling, right? So just Australia, that means that the, that the, that the formula is correct. But if I made the formula and saw that the first observation of my fixed min date rate was something other than 6.77, then I know it's wrong. Like right away, I know it's wrong. So it doesn't prove that it's right if I see it here, but it can prove that it's wrong. And so that is the frustration. So we have to make a table to see if we have it right. Okay. And so what we need to do here is a few things. So we're going to look at this by country. So I'll put this up here and by date. Okay. Again, still trying to figure out dates. Um, you know, usually when I see people talk about dates, there's these two panels, but there's also this third option here, this exact date still don't have my head around that. So I'm going to, select that and change this to discrete. I think this is, think this is correct. Then I want to find the minimum date. Again, I need to change this to exact date. And here it's kind of interesting that this takes, it takes like 15 seconds. If we go back over here, I only have like 26,000, 27,000 observations. It's surprising to me that this takes so long. Maybe it's just my computer. Uh, I don't know. Like, Feel like that should be faster, but okay, whatever. Uh, we'll change that to discrete. Another thing that like kind of drives me a little nutty here is, I mean, is that well, I guess that I have to make both of those changes, but I guess like I shouldn't. I mean, you have to. So uh, I guess no. So what what bothers me is like right now it's discrete. Right now I change it to exact date, and I have to wait 15 seconds, and then what you're going to see is it's going to change it 
the variable to continuous, and then I need to pull it back to discrete. And while it's doing that, I'll take a sip of tea. Okay, so we've got about 15, 16. I mean, it takes a while for this to, to run. It's kind of surprising. And maybe, maybe this isn't the right way to do it, but uh, see, I have to change it back to discrete. I don't know. I don't know why, but okay. So I'll change it to the screen. Okay. Okay. So this looks correct, right? This is the maximum. This is what I wanted to see in my data view, right? I want to see it here, but I'm seeing it in my table. So 2000 and the min and the maximum data is 2000. Let's look at the variables. Okay. And here's another thing that um, I, this is something that I know this is how Tableau works. I just like, I haven't really gotten it yet. So I have to drag it over here as opposed to dragging it up here. And I guess that's just, you know, something I haven't quite gotten used to yet. Now also notice like, why isn't there, why isn't it titled up here? And and you might, as you're watching this, you know what you're doing in Tableau, you might be like, oh, I, I know, but but just watch this. If I drag, this is the first minimum date. Now it adds that title. So I don't understand like for the first one, it doesn't, for when I add more, it does. And I'm gonna rearrange these a little bit because I want them down here and I want them down here. Okay, so this is how I was doing it. And you can see like, this is incorrect. Okay, so a couple of things need to happen. First off, I need to add the country name up here to get all the countries in the filter. So why is this not 20.37? Because I, and I, I was making this mistake early on, I was keep forgetting that there's, there's three gender categories, all men and women. So I need to add that here and I'm gonna select all. Okay, so why is this wrong? So this is something that Kevin showed me. You have to set this as context and that fixes it. So I, I guess my understanding is, and I've done a little bit of reading, but again, it's not like in my head yet. My understanding is that adding to context applies that filter that now gender it to all to everything that follows it. And so that's why I'm now getting the right answer. Um, and you can see, I've got something wrong in one of these formulas, right? Because this fixed max date should be right here. This is Chile. I went too far. Should be 8.06. So let's let's try to get back to let's get back to Australia. So let's edit the filter real quick. And just, and this is again, I'm just like trying to figure out like, am I doing this right? Okay, so I've got the first one's right, but the last one's not. So there's something wrong with the fixed max date formula. So we're going to go back into here. That looks right. Maybe it's in here. So I think maybe this is supposed to be, now I don't even remember. So I clearly did something wrong here to get the maximum in. And someone watching this is like, oh, I know what you did. Oh, I know what I did. I know what I did. I know what I did. Hold on. This should be men. I think I have this right. I know what I did. You're watching this and you're like, oh, he's going to figure it out. And you're going to be excited because this should be max. Fixed. Oh, where'd it go? Fixed max date. It needs to be the max date. It needs to match up. There we go. There we go. Okay, we got it. Let's just check one other one. Again, if I was working in like, let's just check Belgium real quick. If I was working in, you know, state or something, I would like, you know, do some tabbing, some more tabbing, but that 6.2 is right. And then 7.3 is right. So I got that right. Okay, so now I could do my various calculations, right? So now I want to create a calculated field. Let's just say uh, difference from initial. So now that's, um, we're going to do, uh, unemployment rate minus fixed min date rate. And let's bring this over. Okay, there we go. That is looking correct. I mean, you could do, do it different ways. And then we want also the uh, difference uh, in, let's just say last, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. So that's going to be um uh fixed max date rate minus fixed min date rate and we'll add that not very i'm not very good at, at these names so that's the um that's the difference in the last now i can't remember if that's actually 
what I, yeah, so that's, I think that's what I did. Yeah. So I might have flipped it around. I don't really remember. It doesn't matter. But you can see, like, here's what I want to see right here. But I had to go through all of this work to make this table when it should, from my perspective, should be added to my data view. And I know it's not part of the raw data, um, but why can't calculated fields be part of, of this? Like if I, if like, let's go over here, right? If I was doing the same thing here, right? I, just real quickly, like if I did the average, right, I, we'll just make this like super simple. If I did the average of everything, average sits right there. Like I can see it in my spreadsheet. I, so that's something that I'm not, I don't love so far to be perfectly honest, like that, that is, that is, that's bugging me a little bit. Okay. So from here, now that I have the formulas right, now I can start to um, I can start to um, make the graph, right? So I can start to drop uh, things in. Um, I can I need to flip these around. Uh, no, see this is so this is the thing. Like there's still I'm still a little bit of like just click around a little bit and figure it out. So you can see I'm sort of like there we go. That's I knew what I wanted to do, just like not quite in my head. And then I need to add country name to detail. I need to add country name to color. Oh, sorry. I need to add, uh, I've got the wrong variable here. I want difference from initial. That's the new variable. And I want difference from initial to be color. There we go. And now there's something just, uh, it looks a little bit off because um, I think I'm, oh, I know why. Again, I keep forgetting this. I've got to add this piece up here. And I have to add the country name up here too. And I think I'm pretty close to it. Um, so what am I missing? Let's see. Um, I think I wanted difference from initial. So maybe I didn't write, oh, because this is the sum. So I think like you can see me like literally trying to figure this out in my head. And so I clearly like I have something wrong, but I'm I'm close. I mean, I got it right at some point. Let's go back. <laughs> uh, let's go back. I got it right over here. Difference from initial. Um, and I'm not exactly sure where I'm I, I'm messing up over here now. Uh, but you can see like I, I'm oh, because this is January 2000. So I'm not exactly sure. I, I I definitely like made a mistake somewhere, but I've posted the dashboard uh, on my um, uh, on my Tableau Public uh, page, so you can you can take a look. Um, I did want to show in case in case you don't know, I'm, I'm you know again if you're just sort of playing around and just learning uh, Tableau like I am, uh, I'll just like bust these in to like generate the map. I I do wonder like I just sort of like double click these. I, that is a question like, is that how most people do it? Like, do they they just double clicking to make the map? Um, so add uh, some color here. And I have clearly, uh, I have clearly made some mistakes somewhere. So, so you know, uh, clearly not like the polished, um, the 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 polished uh, tableau tutorial that you're probably used to seeing uh, out there but you can see i'm 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 getting there so um i definitely like miss something here i'm not sure why it's not showing me the uh data on the map let's go find out um i think i just missed oh i think i just missed adding the country name to the detail that's why Actually, I have to tell, yeah. Actually, I have to tell Tableau what the countries are. Um, so, um, so okay. So, I've got that set up here, and then the um, piece about the tooltip that I thought was really neat is that you can go to Insert and you can add from the sheet. Now, I didn't name this. That was a bad idea. I'm sure people who do this all the time are like, name your tabs. Um, I don't, I don't disagree with that. I should do that. Uh, makes this, makes this task a little bit easier. Go to tooltip, add, uh, the line here. And then, uh, I can, I'm not going to keep the data there. I'll just switch this around. And another thing that I learned from Steve is that you can change these sizes. I think when the example he did was 250. Um, so I thought that kind of looked nice. And so 
Now, again, what I have to do now is I have to go back to the line chart and change the formatting here so that the formatting here looks looks good. And I would get rid of, this is another thing, like I like in general, like that it sort of sets everything up that way, but like, I'm not gonna do that. So, um, so I'm getting there, uh, I'm learning. Uh, um, there are some other things in, in, um, in uh, Tableau that are still uh, bugging me a little bit. Um, and I haven't quite figured them all out yet. Uh, I'll give you one more before I go. On the dashboard, don't like how I can't grab multiple floating tiles and align them together, right? What I would like to do is be able to align, for example, align these together, right? If you, So if I go back over here, so in case you don't quite understand what I mean. So if I've got like, just say a text box there and another text box here, and I want them aligned together, I can in Excel or PowerPoint or whatever, just align them and they're perfectly aligned. And I don't think with a floating uh, tiles that you can align them perfectly together. So imagine, for example, that I had this here and I had this here. I can't select them at the same time. I'm holding the shift key and I can't select them at the same time. So if I wanted them perfectly aligned, I think I just have to eyeball it, which is a little frustrating. I mean, I'm sure there are times when people add a border around this. So if I added a border here and a border here, so do I just have to eyeball this to like get it like exactly where I want it. That that seems inefficient. May, I'm, I'm sure I'm missing something. Anyway, I don't know. I'm learning. I'm trying. Uh, I really appreciate everyone who's uh, responded to my incessant queries on Twitter and especially to Ken Fleurledge and to Steve Wexler. Uh, and, uh, so I'll try to make another video on the first week of the back to Viz basics challenge. Um, and, uh, and hopefully, uh, I'll get to week three, uh, when it comes out and share those as well. And, uh, maybe I'll come up with some other videos just to see how, you know, show you how I'm sort of learning each of these different steps. So, uh, thanks again. Uh, feel free to reach out, DM me, uh, my Twitter, uh, my tweet, my Twitter DMs are open, put in comments below this uh, video and just let me know what you think and, and where I'm going wrong and where I'm going right. So. Thanks uh, for tuning in. This is John Schwabish from PolicyBiz.